Hi, and welcome to our podcast. Uh, today, we are diving into the fascinating world of API gateways on Kubernetes. In this episode, we'll be discussing the insightful content from a blog post titled The Future of API Gateways on Kubernetes by WSO2. I'm your host, Christopher Davey, and joining me is Pubdu Ganatilka, who is the author of the blog post. And let's jump right into it. Hi, Pubdu. Um, let's start with some basics. Uh, what are API gateways used for and what purpose do they serve in modern architectures? The API gateway plays a key role as a server that bridges the gap between client applications and backend services in modern architectures. They provide centralized entry point for API requests, simplifying API management and enhancing security. Benefits include centralized control, traffic routing, security enforcement, rate limiting, request response transformation, caching, monitoring, load balancing, and service aggregation. In today's modern architectures, particularly those built on microservices and cloud native patterns, API and gateways play a crucial role in maintaining a scalable, secure, and easily management API ecosystem. They simplify the complexities of backend services empowering developers to concentrate on crafting robust APIs. By ensuring seamless communication and enforcing security between clients and services, API gateways become uh, the backbone of highly efficient and reliable API infrastructure. Thanks, Pippadu. But you mentioned in the article the uh, the key difference between API gateways and API management, but do all enterprises need both? Um, the need for both API gateways and API management depends on the specific requirements and goals of each enterprise. While API gateways and API management are related, they serve different purposes in the API ecosystem. API gateways primarily focus on handling API traffic, acting as an intermediary between client and backend services. On the other hand, API management covers a wide range of practices and tools aimed at supporting the complete lifecycle of APIs. This includes tasks like API design, documentation, versioning, analytics, monitoring, and developer onboarding. Whether an enterprise needs both the API gateways and API management depends on their API strategy and goals. Small organizations and fewer APIs and simple requirements may find that a well-configured API gateway meets their needs for traffic management and security. In contrast, large enterprises dealing with numerous APIs multiple stakeholders and complex ecosystems would likely benefit from adapting API management platform to streamline the entire API life cycle, including design, publishing, security, and analytics. Brilliant. Now, we're talking in the article about sort of Kubernetes, and in recent years, there's been a significant surge in Kubernetes adoption among enterprises. Uh, from your perspective, what do you believe are the primary factors that are fueling this trend? Yeah, Kubernetes is becoming widely popular among enterprises for some very good reasons. It's highly scalable, has these amazing container orchestration capabilities, and effortlessly handles cloud native apps. It's vendor neutral ecosystem, DevOps alignment, and high availability further drive its popularity portability, future-proofing, and strong community support make it a preferred choice for enterprises aiming to optimize application management and stay ahead in the digital landscape. You just mentioned sort of cloud-native architectures, and you mention it uh, a lot in the article as well. 
Can you just explain what's different about cloud native architectures from traditional uh, models and architectures? Yeah, cloud native architectures differ from traditional models by leveraging containerization, microservices, and cloud native services. Containerization creates lightweight portable application units, while microservices divide application into smaller, independently deployable services, promoting agility and scalability. Prioritizing scalability, resilience, and automation, cloud native architectures dynamically scale and handle failures gracefully. DevOps uh, practices foster seamless uh, team collaboration, enabling continuous delivery and infrastructure as code for consistent deployments. Observability tools and service mesh enhance monitoring and microservices communication. These attributes empower organizations, maximize cloud environments and promptly adapt to evolving business requirements. Okay, so in this sort of uh, cloud native uh, world, what are the core differences between your traditional API gateways and running a gateway in that sort of cloud native architecture? Yeah, cloud native uh, container based gateways differ from traditional API gateways in the architecture, deployment, scalability, and observability. While traditional gateways are standalone appliances, cloud native gateways run as containers within Kubernetes or container orchestration environments. They scale dynamically alongside with other containerized services, ensuring better resource utilization. Cloud native gateways offer a deployment flexibility, enabling them to adapt to various environments, including on-premises and cloud setups. They align with the DevOps principles, promoting automation and continuous delivery. Additionally, they provide robust observability features, allowing detailed matrices and monitoring within the Kubernetes ecosystem. Overall, cloud native gateways enhance agility and efficiency in modern application environments. Okay, so back to the, the uh, question I asked earlier around the difference. So in the cloud native uh, API management that you mentioned in the art, uh, article, is this different from the sort of deployment patterns seen in traditional uh, virtual machine architectures? And the significant difference in my perspective is the enhanced flexibility and agility that cloud native architectures provide for deployment patterns. It is true that you can simply deploy the same VM architecture in Kubernetes. However, container orchestration features improve the design allowing organization to scale API management components without limitations. In addition to that, um, you can extend existing deployment patterns and modify them to meet the needs of the organization. In, the, in most cases, the API gateway serves as a centralized component. However, using containers, you may use uh, decentralized architectures to run group of API gateways based on criticality and operational requirements. Yeah. So how does this new architecture improve or deal with multi-region, multi-data center or hybrid uh, solutions? In a cloud native API management architecture, there are two separate planes, the control plane and the data plane. The control plane acts as the command set uh, handling API management tasks and key API key generation. On the other hand, the data plane serves as the gateway for API calls, enabling public or private consumers to access the created APIs. You can basically run a single control plane while connecting many data planes to it. So the organizations can use this flexibility to develop multi-region, multi, -region, multi data center or hybrid solution. Brilliant. Now, the, <clears throat> within the Kubernetes ecosystem, um, where the 
there is the Kubernetes Gateway API project. Now, what sort of benefits does that offer to API management and sort of running these gateways within a Kubernetes environment? Yeah, the Kubernetes uh, Gateway API project basically provides several key benefits to the Kubernetes ecosystem and API management. Firstly, it aims to standardize the API deployment and management within Kubernetes, promoting uh, consistency and interoperability across different environments. By abstracting complexity, it simplifies gateway configuration, making it easier for developers and operators to work with API gateways. It fosters cloud-native API management practices, enabling scalable and adaptable uh, gateways in, in dynamic cloud environments. Additionally, the project's community collaboration ensures ongoing improvements and vendor neutrality, allowing organizations to choose the best suited gateway solution for their needs. Now, with, with that, uh, why does it help that the configurations for the gateway are managed as custom resource definitions within the Kubernetes uh, deployment? Yeah, so managing gateway configurations as custom resource definitions, or we call it CRDs in Kubernetes, brings numerous advantages. It enables a declarative approach, simplifying configuration management uh, and maintenance and also version control. CRDs seamlessly integrate within the Kubernetes ecosystem, ensuring consistency and compatibility with other resources. Reusability, dynamic updates, uh, streamline the deployments of multiple gateways with similar configurations. Overall, uh, CRDs enhance the manageability, scalability, and integration of API gateways within Kubernetes, aligning with native resource management practices and simplifying gateway configuration management. The article envisions a future where a unified control plane can efficiently manage various API gateways. Uh, how does that idea actually become a reality? Yeah. So API standardization plays a vital role in driving this transformative vision. As all API gateway solutions adhere to a unified API standard, it empowers the single control plane to effectively govern and manage diverse API gateways within the ecosystem. In practice, the control plane sends its instructions using custom resource definitions or CRDs, which ensures consistency across all API gateways due to this API standardization. This uh, standardized approach simplifies the control plane's interactions with various gateways, resulting in a consistent and unified management experience. So is there still a necessity for different gateways considering the transformative impact of API standardization? Well, uh, API and gateways will eventually become a commodity evolving into a foundational component of the infrastructure and you don't need different gateways. Just like your file system, there will be, there will come a day when you don't, you won't need to dedicate conscious attention to the API gateways. As a user, the format of your file system is not a main issue today. Similarly, API gateways implementation will fade into the background, becoming an integral part of the infrastructure that effortlessly allows API connections. The day is approaching when you won't need to fuss over the API gateways specifics, allowing you to focus more on developing and leveraging APIs to fill your applications and digital initiatives. Okay, so 
API gateways become commodity or abstracted away and become easily configurable part of the infrastructure. So that means we don't need to worry any more about APIs. Mm. Yes, to some extent, like when the API gateway becomes a community, this will free developers from the burden, burden of directly managing gateways and its uh, associated complexity. But the focus will shift towards API management, which uh, encompasses a range of essential features like lifecycle management, governance, marketplace, versioning, productization, and insights for data-driven decisions. This evolution in API management will foster a more streamlined and efficient development process empowering uh, developers to innovate and drive business growth uh, through enhanced API experiences. Well, um, thank you very much, Radu. That was really interesting. And if anyone wants to uh, find out any more or read uh, Pibidu's article, uh, please visit uh -huh. wso2.com. <laughs>